Hang on, number one. Have you ever been swarmed by a sea of red? Okay, that sounds kind of bad. I lost you there, right? How about being taken down by a well-coordinated force that dominated the landscape around you? Well, if you played H1Z1, then you might know the terrifying enigma that is facing the Red Army. Remember H1Z1? How about Z1 Battle Royale? Back in its heyday, this was more than just a game, it was a battlefield, an arcade landscape of pure fun, where players not only fought against zombies, but in its battle royale mode, each other. And in this world, a red tide was rising. Meet the Red Army. With their massive numbers and uniform red clothing, they were pretty much impossible to miss and even harder to defeat. If you saw them, you'd better have some conveys on or a car to drive away because you'd be lucky to escape with your life. You're either joining them or backing out the lobby real quick. You'd just be minding your own business and then suddenly you'd hear an echo in proximity voice and then boom, your helmet was dinked clean off. Ah! Oh. <laughs> followed by a one-tap as tens of more players in red Chinese hoodies came and teabagged your body, screaming expletives at you in their mother tongue. But not everyone was a fan. Their aggressive tactics led to controversy, with accusations of unfair gameplay. But were they heroes or villains? Even famous streamers had their encounters. Remember Tfue? Well, he wasn't always a Fortnite player. In fact, back in his H1Z1 days, he had a run-in with the Red Army too. And he took things into his own hands with a Jeep and a bunch of bullets. Or when Grimmy Bear infiltrated their ranks by looting one of their hoodies off a downed member. No? Pick up their outfit, pick up their outfit. We're probably oh, yeah, going yeah, to yeah. bro. <laughs> the Red Army was kind of like a parasite or a cyst that just grows and keeps expanding. It didn't matter where you were from, if you had a red China hoodie, you were one of them and the rest of the lobby was going to feel your wrath. The thing it was, was most of the players were actually terrible and were bots, and if you caught one of them off guard, you were probably going to waste them. But it was their units and their strength in numbers that made them absolutely unstoppable, which is why it made it so hilarious to try and infiltrate them with your friends. What this was, was basically Daybreak, who created the game, released a bunch of country-specific hoodie skins on the Steam Marketplace, and if you bought it, you could just wear your country flag. But you could still loot them from a player's body if you didn't have the skin. But players from China China at the time were becoming a problem in H1Z1, mainly because of their high pings and how they just lag all around the place, which just made it super hard to hit them, especially when coupled with the already existing problems of desync in the game and the bunch of bugs that plagued H1Z1. In an effort to keep things fairer, Daybreak took actions to implement ping locks, theoretically just blocking players out with high pings, which mostly just put a stop to most Asian players connecting, with only some, who use VPNs and certain other methods, managing to get through. Sure, it made the game fairer, but it really killed the game's numbers. The Red Army's legacy lives on. H1Z1 is a ghost town nowadays, but the memories of its moments will be cherished by its players like myself forever. Did you ever see the Red Army or try to infiltrate them? Let me know your stories in the comments. If this video was fun, don't forget to let me know by giving it a like and subscribing, and I'll catch you real soon for another banger.